Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Luis Ross, as one of the uh, first year fellows. Uh, I'm going to talk today about TB meningitis. Um, so, I'm gonna fir first of all, I'm going to talk about the history of TB a little bit. So, uh, it's a very old disease. So, we have records that even in Egypt, uh, 3500 before uh, Christ era, uh, there, there is evidence that in, in these mummies, um, I mean, there was TB, they did PCR from these lesions on the bones, and it was positive for, for TB, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Uh, this is the uh, one of the most famous. Um, okay, what's happening? I think I pressed the wrong button. Is it still playing? Can you go backwards? It's not. Okay. So, um, this is uh, Nefertiti, one of the most famous queens of Egypt. Uh, she got TB. There is evidence that, that uh, she got TB and also the, uh, her husband. Uh, more about the story uh, of the TB. Um, when I was in medical school, we believed that uh, TB came from Europe, but, <laughs> <laughs> but with, with the Spanish. And, but uh, there was evidence that uh, Peruvian mummies, they got the TB uh, from before. Uh, again, they did PCR of one of these uh, mummies, and, and it actually it was positive for, for mycobacterium. The epidemiology is, is very important. I mean, sometimes we don't pay attention as much as we should uh, to TB because it's not very frequent in the U.S. But actually, I mean, uh, there are reports that there are like 8 million new cases of TB per year. And uh, this disease kills like around 2 million people. And in 1997, uh, TB meningitis was the fifth uh, most common form of extrapulmonary TB. Uh, we can tell that uh, TB meningitis accounts of 2.1% of cases of TB and 9.1% of cases of extrapulmonary TB. We can find uh, tuberculomas. Um, it's, it's very well known that TB is more uh, frequent in minorities, but it's not because uh, a genetic predisposition, because there was no evidence of genetic factors so far. Uh, they keep trying to find a gene for susceptibility for TB. But uh, until today, I mean, they are thinking about maybe one or two genes, but there is nothing confirmed. So they are thinking that it's more like lower socioeconomic status that is involved on this. So this is a map of uh, distribution of TB. The red areas are the one that, I mean, are, are the highest uh, incidence of TB. Uh, the orange ones, including Peru, where I'm from, it's a... Uh, I mean, it's, it's also very prevalent. And if you see the U.S., it's, I mean, it, it has sporadic cases and it's more people coming from other areas. Uh, this is one of the reasons why. Uh, this is a picture from, from Peru, where I'm from. So um, we use these small uh, transportation systems. We call them combis. And um, this person here, he's the one who charged the money. OK, and uh, they did a study with them and uh, actually, like 75% of them are positive for, for TV. So and if, if you can see, in this small room full of people, and uh, sometimes you are in this car for one hour, two hours, I mean, maybe more, you know, so the chances for you to get infected are very high. On top of that, if you get sick, very sick, you go to the hospital, and then in the hospital, they will put you in a place where like 15 people in the same room with TV also, and uh, nobody wears mask, you know. So it's um, it's very easy to spread the disease in, uh, I mean, in, in developing countries. So and this is one of the reasons. Um, there are areas in the planet where TB meningitis is the most frequent cause of uh, of bacterial meningitis. For, for example, sub uh, saharan Africa is one of the most prevalent areas. So how how do we get the disease? So uh, the day of infection, um, somebody coughs, somebody sneezes, you you got the the the, uh, the the mycobacterium. It goes through the airway, and it it stays in the in the lung the first day. Then you get uh, macrophages around, and then it activates a cellular response. You got lymph nodes, and then you got the lesion that is growing. This is called the GAN complex. 
this is uh, between two to three weeks. After four to five weeks, what happens is that you have a uh, period where the, uh, bac the mycobacterium goes all over the body because of hematogenous dissemination. So this is when the TB test becomes positive. Uh, I mean the tuberculin test. Six to eight weeks after, I mean because of the uh, hematogenous dissemination, the, you, you will have mycobacterium seeded like in many organs. It comes back to the lung and it stays on the apical areas. So some, sometimes after a year can be less, can be more, uh, depending on the immunity. If you get reactivation, then the mycobacterium starts to like replicate and um, and if you don't have a good immune response then you develop the disease. So it's in this area here when you have the uh, hematogenous dissemination when the bacteria can go to the to the meninges and causing bacterial meningitis. So what happens in the in the central nervous system? You basically de develop vasculitis. So uh, with this vasculitis, you can get thrombosis and, uh, and hemorrhagic infarctions. And that's what will give you some of the symptoms of uh, TB and the CNS. So um, what points do you get when you have TB? What do you have to look for, uh, like TB meningitis? You have a prodrome that is not very specific. It's like any other uh, bacterial meningitis. But the difference is that this is very chronic most of the time. You have headaches, vomiting, photophobia, fever, the duration. Uh, uh, I mean, most of the time. Duration um, from day one to uh, de for to nine months um, you, you is, is when you start developing the, the disease. And uh, something that is very important is the BCG in endemic areas. You get, you get the BCG to protect you against the, the most uh, serious uh, infections. In this case, um, you would you wouldn't protect the patients with uh, for for uh, pulmonary TB, but you can prevent to have more serious uh, I mean uh, involvement like uh, tuber tuberculosis in the meninges. You can have visual symptoms, including uh, blindness, ophthalmoplegia, and the reason is because of, of the area where the TB hits in the brain can affect the uh, uh, the, the cranial nerves. Usually the uh, the sixth, the th the third, the fourth, the fifth, and uh, you can develop also UV UVitis, uh, granulomatous UVitis in the eye, and uh, there are cases where it's described that they have sudden onset of neurological deficits, including uh, manoplegia, hemiplegia, aphasia, and tet tetraparesia. Um, tremor is very frequent um, for TB. It's, it's very uh, typical for that. Uh, so when you have a patient with chronic meningitis and tremor, and it's coming from an endemic area, you, you can think about it. Uh, secretion of uh, ADH in appropriate and appropriate secretion, it's 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 uh, it's also linked to to uh, meningitis uh, for uh, caused by tuberculosis, and usually when you have that, it's a poor prognosis. Uh, less frequent presentations, you can have uh, seizures on, in in children. Uh, you can have a uh, 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 pulses of the uh, uh, cranial nerves, as I described before. You can have papilledema, or, or you can have acute confusional state. Usually, it's more chronic, though. Uh, risk factors: um, If you're very thin, uh, if you have diabetes, chronic kidney disease, uh, prior uh, bariatric surgery, silicosis, uh, homeless uh, person. If you're in, uh, on, on jail for, uh, if, if you're a resident of a long-term facility. Um, if you have uh, TB, latent TB um, acquired in the last two years, immunocompromised patients, as I said before, and something that is very important, uh, more in the U.S., because this is where you see more TB here, is that patients who have HIV, they have 10% of reactivation of TB per year compared to uh, people that are not immunocompromised, that you can get it a 5 to 10% life, lifetime. Children under age of four, uh, substance abuse, and uh, prior TB with uh, changes on the x-ray. So what do you look in the physical exam? You look for the BCG vaccine, because one, one, once again, if you get the BCG vaccine, you have like less chances to get um, mycobacterium tuberculosis in the brain. 
but this is most of the time protecting when you are a kid, not when you are an adult. Um, you can find the neurological findings that I was describing before, depending on what is what is the cranial nerve that is involved. And as I said, tremor is the most common movement disorder when you have mycobacterium tuberculosis. This is a differential. I mean, you can read it. Yeah, it's super long. You know, any anything that can cause uh, chronic meningitis or, or uh, neurological symptoms that are chronic is going to be listed here. How do you do? How do you do the diagnosis? So. Um, you do an LP. What do you look in the CS? Is CSF that is characteristic of TB? If you see the 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 fluid here, it has like a spider web. Okay, and this is very typical because uh, TB tends to produce high levels of protein in the CSF, and uh, and that's why this web forms when when you put the tube in uh, like 10 minutes there, and it would form this. It's very characteristic of of TB, but it's rare. Some other things that you can find, you can have hemorrhagic CSF, and the reason is because of the, what I was describing before. You get vasculitis, you can have hemorrhagic strokes, little hemorrhagic strokes, and, and then you can develop hemorrhagic CSF. Um, things that are typical for TB, you have very, hi very high levels of protein, very low levels of uh, glucose, and uh, the WBCs, they tend to have uh, lymphocytic uh, pre predominance, but uh, don't look for that all the time because this is present in around 60% of the cases and there are 40% of the cases that is uh, polymorpho, uh, polymorphic cells there, not, not lymphocytes. What about the AFB? The AFB is only positive in one-fourth of the cases, so it's, it's not very helpful. You have to do it. If you're lucky, you get it, but uh, you have to keep in mind that it's only 25%. And uh, the culture is only positive in 61% of the cases, usually. So uh, you have to have a very high suspicious and keep looking for the TB. It's very frustrating, but uh, when you're in a place where it's very endemic, you see so many patients with this that you tend to know who is the one you have to keep looking for it. Uh, HIV and TB, um, what, what happened with the CSF when, when you have HIV? It changes a lot, and that and the patients that we're gonna find here most probably they have HIV and TB. Uh, so these patients they tend to have uh, the the cells. Sometimes you cannot find any cells there, and it's still meningitis. Uh, the protein can be normal, but the thing that is gonna still be low is the, is the glucose. So if you have a patient with meningitis, low glucose, and, and high suspicious, think about TB. So there is a, a, a patogn patognomonic sign for TB. What happened here is that uh, you get an LP and you, you find mononuclear cells and, and then you start thinking this may be TB. So then you give the treatment. For some reason you repeat the LP and then it's going to be a polymorph uh, nuclear cells there. So this reaction is uh, probably because you kill the, the mycobacterium, mycobacterium releases uh, 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 proteins from inside, and then the, the, uh, the, these cells, they will come back again. So this is very typical for TB. Um, something that we don't use here very often, but we do use this, I mean, in, in, in Peru we use this a lot, is uh, adenosine deaminase, the ADA. Uh, I am surprised that we don't use this very often here because it has a very high sensitivity and very high specificity. It's a very cheap procedure. Um, I mean, it's much more uh, cheaper than a, than a PCR, and it has very good sensitivity, very good specificity. So if you can order it, go ahead and do it, because it will help a lot. Um, the PCR, there are two types of PCR available. The one that is now approved for, for uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis is this, uh, the MTD. That's how it's called, MTD direct test. Um, it has a sensitivity of 74%, specificity of 98%. So if you go back, PCR is more expensive, and this one has better sensitivity and better specificity. The imaging, um, you can use MRI, you can use CT scan. MRI with contrast is better, and if you suspect TB meningitis, uh, order contrast all the time because that, that's how you get the, the idea that this is TB. It's never diagnostic, 
but it helps. So what you can see in the MRI here, okay, you can see a tuberculum in the area with a lot, lots of edema there. Okay, this is with T, T2. And with T, T1 in the MRI, you can find these small like uh, areas of tuberculosis, the tuberculomas. They're basically granulomas in the in the CNS. Okay, and this is an abscess. So you can you can have so many uh, findings, uh, radiologic findings with TB. Here on, on a CT, you can find uh, I mean hydrocephalus. You can have meningeal enhancement. You see, it's like it's all inflamed. Um, so what do you do for treatment? So uh, you want to use uh, four drugs. Uh, the recommendation actually is three, but if you are in a place where uh, the chances of getting INH resistance or refamping resistance is, is high, you can use you can use four. So, I believe in the U.S. you can use three drugs, but if it is a patient that is coming from an endemic area of uh, multi-drug resistant TB, you can start with four drugs. The things that uh, we usually use is INH refamping, uh, pyrazinamide, and etambutol. And you can also use uh, streptomycin. Um, so how you do it? You use uh, four drugs for two months, and then you continue the uh, the, 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 the the INH and refamping for for a longer period of time. Some people recommend a nine months. Some people recommend one year. Okay, at least give nine months. And if the patient is immunocompromised, you can give uh, twelve months. I have a slide after this. If the patient has a multi-drug resistant TB. Uh, you can use these drugs, uh, etionamide, cycloserine, ofloxacin, ofloxacin, and paramino salicylic acid. Um, there are some reports uh, that, I mean, the, the place where I was working before in Peru, we were doing some studies about this. And actually, when you, even if you have resistance in the cultures, if the patient is clinically better and is improving, you can actually go ahead and continue the same drugs, even if in, in vitro you have resistance. Um, it's difficult to believe, but TB is, is a bacteria that when you have a uh, good concentration of, of INH and refamping, these drugs are very good. These drugs are bactericidal and, and they can actually, uh, I mean, kill the, 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 the mycobacterium even when, when the in vitro test shows uh, resistance. The duration of treatment, as I said, um, some people say nine months. The recommendation that I saw, it's 12 months. And, uh, and you can increase the, the, the duration of the treatment depending on your patient, depending on the, on the resistance. But just keep in mind that it's not something that is uh, very established, I mean, how long you, you are gonna treat for these patients. But uh, at least think that is nine months minimum, 12, you are, you are fine giving 12. And if the patient is not give, doing well, give more than that. So what about the steroids? Um, there was um, nobody was sure about this, the use of steroids before, but uh, there was a publication done in the New England Journal in 2004 that actually clarifies this idea. It, it was a randomized double-blind placebo-control trial done in Vietnam, and uh, they followed the patient for 14 years. I mean, they were collecting data for 14 years. And, uh, and they actually found a very good data that dexamethasone given for, given for the treatment with the other drugs is, is very useful. So um, nowadays I would recommend to use the steroids when you're suspecting TB meningitis without any doubt because now we have data that supports that. So, uh, yes. No, no, no. It is a, they recollect the, the data for, for for 14 years, but I'm not sure if uh, I mean if, if if they follow the patient for 14 years. I don't think so. They recollect the data for 14 years. And um, so this is a. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so, you know, actually, it's ironic that he pulls this up because I've been uh, doing my research 